Well, how's the church going? I said, well, we're growing together. That's my number one line. Like, and actually, that's the most exciting thing for me and my wife is that we're growing together. See, that's, that's something that will be sustained and keep growing because it's together. But two, if, 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 if like, let's say me and my wife was just running out ahead of everybody, that's not healthy. Or just three or four people was out ahead. But us growing together, now everybody's gonna, some people are gonna be out ahead, but I'm just talking about like, just, just they're on a whole nother planet. <laughs> that's not always healthy because uh, like if we don't grow together, and let's say me and my wife just ran out ahead and we, we, for whatever reason, we're lifting up the Lord in such a great way, all these people come. Well, who's going to serve them? Us? But we're growing together. Everybody's growing. At, some people are learning different things at their particular pace, but growing together, that's exciting for us. Now, but there's an intent for that. There's a reason why we have to grow together. So now I know the temptation is for some of us to to kind of stay behind the scenes or, or limit their interaction, but you have to realize God's process is layered learning. Uh, now the Lord gave me that, and when he gave it to me in my, in, my, in my quiet time, I said, layered learning. I said, I said, that's probably a process for learning even in the world. So when I looked it up, there is a process called layered learning. <laughs> What the Lord has shown me is layered learning. So, so layered learning, and it's something I've learned in sports. It's something I've always done. You know, I, I was over a ministry school, and I wanted you to absorb the information. You know, like some teachers try to trick you. You know that, right? Like, but tricking you is the goal for you to learn or to prove that I know more than you. And I learned it through, I was a school administrator over school, and they had a PACE program. And so we went to training. And so when we went to training, they gave us two thick manuals, about this thick. So normally when you get manuals, they're for reference, right? So, so you know, somebody might say something and you, you go reference the manual. But you don't need to know. Like, you don't have to read through the whole manual right away. So I went back to the room and watched the football game. Came to class the next day, guess what? They was giving us information that was in the manual. And before we got out of that training, we needed to know everything in the manual. We had to read through the whole manual. So I'm already a behind. I was like, these people are crazy, right? Like, you got to read through both of the manuals? But the way they set it up, we would, we would go over the stuff in class, one level. Go back to the room, we had to do homework, another level. Come back and go through another process in the class and then take a test. I aced all those tests because of the system that they set up. Sort of like in school, you go to school, they give you information. You're supposed to, they always tell you to participate, right? But some people participate, some people don't. Well, every time you participate, you absorb more information. Then they give you homework. But some people do it, some people don't. But you learn something through homework. Then you get a lab. You learn something through the lab. It's layered learning. It's not just the information in the moment. It's the same thing that God does in our life. So some people feel, I'm just gonna come to church on Sunday. You only get one layer. The interaction is a layer because what happens when we have fellowships or we're talking? Uh, like uh, I know we had the fellowship at the house and me and Marcus was talking and I was telling them the testimony of how we came to Charlotte and how it was between two places, it was between Charlotte and Texas. He was like, oh my God. It was between two places for us, Charlotte and Texas. So as we kept talking, there was so many other connecting things, but that confirmed to, to, to him that, that God's, God's doing some things. There's, there's other people that, that talk and they fellowship and they interact, and it's like, well, well, you know, I realized this, or I had this conversation. You actually now absorbing more information through your interaction without even Without somebody saying, one, two, three, four, turn the scripture such and such. You, it's layered learning, so it's fellowship. Now you participate in God talk, you have to share or you have to interact. You learn from there. Uh, we'll, 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 we may do something else. We may have training classes, but everything that God is giving you, the Bible studies on Wednesday, it's layered learning, so you absorb the information. So sometimes the reason why you're not getting it, because you only getting one layer. 
and, and everybody's not a literal learner. You have CDs back there. Sometimes going over the CD over and over and over. Each time you listen to it, you get something else out of the CD. Now, wait a minute, did, did, did he teach that? Was I there that day? Yes, but maybe you, the first revelation convicted you. So you spent about 10 minutes in conviction while the other revelation was going for us. So you didn't hear it, but you listened to the CD, you've, you've, you've worked through that first part, now you, you listen to the second part. Then another day, you actually are dealing with the third level of what the CD is talking about. And now you relate to that too. But again, once again, layered learning. So utilizing everything that you've been afforded. We went through like a whole 90 days where I told you to take any CD you want. Not, be, not just to be doing it, it's because I understand there's so many different ways you can learn. Some of you, some of you listen to stuff, but reading it is another way because now your eye gate is, is picking it up also. Writing it down is another way. So it's because you're using every part of you to absorb that information. You know, you increase your memory by 66% when you write stuff down. See, using every aspect, so then when you say I don't understand why and how come this is not happening and how come I don't get it, are you utilizing every aspect God has given you for layer learning? Do you come to church with a notepad and your Bible? So you reading along. I know I quote a lot of scriptures to get through stuff. Are you writing down those scriptures? So you can go back and study them yourself later. Search the scriptures to see if it's so. John 5, 39. See, so family, Look, look, look uh, they were talking about it earlier. They said in their family devotion, they were saying, okay, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what's the thing you valued or, or what's, what's one of the things that really impacted you. And they were talking about the airborne, but that was, uh, that was in family devotion. And then we had a Bible study one time, we were talking about something. And when they got to talk, they was like, we was just talking about this in our family devotion. So look, they got either information or even maybe, uh, uh, of course, for us to absorb God's word. So verse two says this, for all those things have, uh, well, well, verse one, it says, thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And where, and where is the house that you build me? And where is the place of my rest? So even if you build me a house and you give me a place, except for all those things has my hand made. So even though you, you think you do me a favor, I did those things to you. And all those things have been, have been saved the Lord. So they've been done before. You ain't doing nothing new. But to this man will I look. So the person that will get my attention, even to him that is poor, that is without, and of a contrite heart. That's, that, that's, that, you know, David says in Psalm 51, sacrifices of God are broken and contrite heart. That means that person of brokenness, that person of humility, that person that is not focusing on his own level of competency and his own greatness, think he's sweet, but that person that's empty of themselves is what he's saying in the scripture. He says, and trembleth at my word. He says, so you think I'm looking at the purpose person that built a great house or had the great accomplishment that I really did that. And then most of the stuff you did has been done already. That which is has already been. Ecclesiastes 3.15 says that. He says, no, 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 no. I'm focusing on the person with a contrite heart. The person that's humble in spirit. Because that person that's empty has room for me to fill them up. That's the person I'm concentrating on. And the person that trembles at my word. When they hear my word, they could be doing anything. They stopping in their tracks. They have that much reverence for my word. They're not just, you know, they're not taking the word for granted. Ah, that's just the word. Ah, John 3.16, behind the goalposts. Eh. Ah, license plate, Matthew 6.33. That's in the Bible. And just keep on rolling. No, no, I was, Matthew 6.33. That, they drove in front of me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What is God telling me? Isaiah 55, 11, his word will not return to me void. Jeremiah 1, 12, he'll hasten his word to perform it. What's God trying to tell me today? Trembling at his word. Has so much of reverence. They got their notes. They got their Bible. Okay, I got to take now. I got to spend some time because God is telling me something. Anytime I'm around his people, anytime I'm in his house, anytime I'm listening to a song, God is trying to tell me something. He's always telling me something. You know, God, God, God is up to something. God is up to something good? I know, I know. 
<laughs> God's up to something? God, God wants me to say yes? Oh my God, he's excellent? That means he has attention to detail? Every aspect of my life he's covering? That's the person that God's paying attention to. But, but you know, when you could be around his word and it's like, hey, whatever, hurry up, get this done. You know, God said, okay, since you're not attentive to my word, you want me to hear you when you pray? So you're going to speak words to me that you want me to be attentive to every word that comes out of your mouth, every desire that you express. But I'm communicating to you because prayer is communication. It's not just you talking to me. I'm talking to you too. You want me to hear you and respond and act on what you say. So I said that the measure you meet shall be measured unto you, but you're not listening to me, not responding to me and everything that I say. So that's your measure then. So God's going, okay, you establish our relationship. We're family. How you roll is how I believe you want me to flow. Oh, you're taking my word for granted. It's not that important to you. So I guess your word shouldn't be as important to me. I can, you know, take it or leave it then, right? That makes sense, right? I take it your faces mean that, ugh, I need to make some adjustments. That's what I, I, I'm just assuming that, right? We, we good? We all right? And that's interesting. You know, some people will walk right out of here and still not value God's word. Turn, let's go to Deuteronomy. See, so this whole family and us coming together, you think coming to church is just a, hey, let's come to church so I can go check. I'm at church. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, why did I do that to y'all? Look at, uh, go back to Isaiah 66 real quick. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 6. Man, I'm not even, uh, I got so much stuff here, I ain't even got to it. Um, Isaiah 66. So God said, he had told him to hearken to his word and he kept on reading. He says, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, look, 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 verse five says, he that hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, let the Lord be magnified, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they, and they shall be ashamed. So all those that trip him because you are attentive to the word. Look, verse six says, a voice of noise from the city of, so, so again, we're talking God's word. It says a voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, and a voice of the Lord that, that rendereth uh, recompense to his enemies. So it's talking about layered. It says God is communicating, but is layered. It says, look, look, he said, the voice of the Lord from the city. So even while you're out there, God is talking all the time. He's talking through a billboard. He's talking through TV. He's talking through a license plate. He's talking through a conversation at a restaurant. It's, it, then he says, in the temple, in, in his house, he's talking. God's talking here today. He's talking through the song. He's talking through a conversation. He's talking through a conversation at the end of the service. He's talking through the conversation that you, you thought you eavesdropped on. Then he said, I'm talking directly to you too. So I'm, I, I'm covering, you have no excuse to say you didn't hear me. I didn't hear God. Was you listening? Were you att attentive to his word? Were you reverence his word? Because God is talking. God is talking louder than you're listening at times. All right, so, 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 uh, Deuteronomy 6. Let's go. Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse 7. Again, family coming together. Look at this. It says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So he's talking about his word. Right. He's talking about his word and and letting them know uh, the boundaries that will cost them when they're crossing outside of his presence. He says, thou shalt teach them diligent to thy children. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sitteth in thine house, when thou walketh by the way, when thou lieth down and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them on the post of thy house and on thy gates. 